Following the September 30, 2022 coup that deposed interim President Paul Henry Sandugo de Miba, Burkina Faso was led by military commander Ibrahim Tror, Africa's youngest president at 34 years old. Tror's rise to power marked a watershed moment in Burkina Faso's political history, as the country navigated the complexities of military rule while calling for stability and democratic governance. Throughout his tenure, Tror has maintained a dignified demeanor that is reminiscent of his previous reputation. He has taken a strategic approach to communication, tightly controlling his public image to avoid the negative perceptions that plagued his predecessors. Tror's emphasis on projecting the image of a composed and decisive wartime leader reflects his determination to guide Burkina Faso through difficult times while maintaining a delicate balance between public opinion and military authority. As Africa's youngest sitting president, Tror's leadership style and decisions have far-reaching implications for Burkina Faso's political trajectory and people's aspirations. During his tenure, pro-government propaganda has increased in Burkina Faso's traditional and social media outlets. It is appropriate to describe him as a revolutionary, similar to Thomas Sankara. In the most recent development, Tror suspended the issuance of export permits for artisanal and semi-mechanized gold and other precious commodities, effective immediately. Artisanal miners are individuals or small groups who extract gold using traditional methods and tools, often with limited technology and mechanization. They usually sell their gold direct to local traders or middlemen. Semi-mechanized miners use some level of mechanization for extraction and processing, typically with small machinery and equipment. They may operate under more formal structures and sell their gold to larger traders or export companies. According to a statement released by military leaders on February 20, the suspension was necessary to clean up the sector and reflects the government's desire to better organize the marketing of gold and other precious substances. It also stated that mining groups with material to export should contact the National Society for Precious Commodities for payment. In 2020, gold accounted for 37% of Burkina Faso's total exports, and mining is amazing. Major employer. However, in recent years, political unrest and a widespread Islamist insurgency have hampered exploration and reduced gold extraction, forcing the closure of some mines and a decrease in production at others. Two military coups were also launched in 2022 as a result of frustration with the growing insecurity. It is unclear what effect the new export ban will have. Artisanal production accounts for nearly half of industrially produced gold in West Africa's Sahel region, which includes Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso mines between 10 and 30 tons of gold annually, employing an estimated 1 million people. Remember that in December, Captain Abraham Tror revoked the mining permits of all foreign companies in Burkina Faso, including those from Russia. He appears to have become aware of the covered activities carried out by multinational corporations in Burkina Faso. How did he cancel the licenses, and what is his plan for the thousands of tons of gold that will still be in Burkina Faso? Directly affected industry titans included B2 Gold, Norgold, Endeavor Mining, Semafo, Fortuna Silver Mines, and Hummingbird Resources, all of which were Western businesses that plundered the continent's riches. Captain Ibrahim couldn't understand why Burkina Faso, despite its large gold reserves, remained one of the world's poorest countries. He was aware that Burkina Faso's former colonial power, France, had imposed unfair trade agreements on the country both before and after independence, ensuring that France benefited disproportionately from Burkina Faso's gold reserves. This has prevented Burkina Faso from developing its own gold industry. While serving in the military, Captain Abraham Tror observed that Burkina Faso's gold exports were subject to unfair price arrangements, and that French companies were given first priority for mining licenses. France failed to provide adequate support to Burkina Faso's to domestic gold mining industry, preferring foreign technology and experience, preventing the transfer of knowledge and skills to Burkina Faso citizens. Because of its increased reliance on foreign players, the country struggled to establish itself as a leader in the gold mining industry. Captain Abraham Tror made it his mission to free Burkina Faso from this trap 
after witnessing the evil nature of France's Sahelian policies. However, he was aware that France had previously unduly influenced Burkina Faso's government to ensure that mining policies benefited French businesses. This included opposing laws, defending regional authority over gold reserves, and putting pressure on the government to provide favorable terms to French businesses. Ibrahim Troor decided to compete for the gold. First, he must consolidate all of his powers to escape Burkina Faso's systemic trap, in which the CFA franc, a shared currency used by several West African countries, looted the country's gold sector. Because of the CFA franc's fixed exchange rate with the euro, Burkina Faso's exports are perceived as artificially overpriced, reducing its international competitiveness. This is one of the primary reasons why Ibrahim Trier recently announced that his country may soon abandon the CFA franc as part of a larger effort to break all ties that kept them in slavery. Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger have repeatedly demonstrated that they value autonomy over expediency, having driven out French soldiers and withdrawn from a UN mission in Mali. Their stance on the euro-paid CFA franc appears to be unchanged, despite the fact that analysts and experts believe that abandoning the CFA would be riskier and more difficult than leaving Mikawa's, a decision that would be viewed as a daring, if possibly foolish, act of defiance. However, France was able to artificially strengthen the CFA franc before devaluing it after purchasing a large amount of gold from Burkina Faso, forcing France to pay less in CFA francs than the original price for the gold. This made it clear that France's involvement in Burkina Faso's gold mining industry was primarily motivated by a desire to exploit the country's resources for its own gain, with little regard for Burkina Faso's development. Tror's decision to immediately suspend export permits for artisanal and semi-mechanized gold and other precious commodities has sparked a number of discussions and potential consequences. This decision could have a significant impact on approximately 1 million people who are directly or indirectly involved in artisanal gold mining, which is a vital source of income for many Burkinabe. The suspension could result in decreased gold production and exports, affecting the national economy and government revenue. Come to think of it, the ban may push miners into the black market, undermining the government's transparency and regulatory goals. Discontent in affected communities will almost certainly lead to social unrest and instability, exacerbating Burkina Faso's already difficult situation. It is worth noting that the government has not announced the duration of the suspension, which has created uncertainty for miners and businesses. But Troer has a plan. It's possible that Western corporations have begun using these small-scale gold traders to extract gold from Burkina Faso. Many African nations are trapped in cycles of dependency and poverty as a result of the enormous profits that Western firms have made from Africa's resources. Chores initiatives are part of a growing movement among African leaders to demand a more equitable share. Sharing their riches in ways that go beyond the immediate financial benefits, as well as challenging the notion that their continent is only a source of cheap resources. Chor's decision challenges the Western narrative that sees African nations as cheap resource suppliers, while also claiming his right to self-determination. Traer is fighting for sovereignty. His audacious action may inspire other African countries to adopt the same stance and seize control of their destiny. Under the steadfast leadership of Captain Ibrahim Tror, Burkina Faso is rewriting history by tackling the challenge of regaining control of its vast gold reserves and challenging foreign corporations' historical dominance. The establishment of a new gold refinery marks the beginning of an exciting new era in which the country seeks to attract investors committed to sustainable and ethical development while realizing the full potential of its mineral wealth. Burkina Faso previously agreed to allow the export of unprocessed gold. As a result, Burkina Faso missed an opportunity to boost its revenue. Burkina Faso's officials will be on site to assess the fair amount of gold that should be supplied. Previously, exporting raw gold meant accepting lower prices and withdrawing from the refining process. Now is the time for change. Take note that Troer has also followed through on everything he promised in his speech at the Russia-Africa summit in St. Petersburg.
He claimed Burkina Faso had been subjected to the most violent form of imperialist neocolonialism in recent years, and slavery had continued to impose itself on them, but he did not want anyone to feel sorry for his country. This was because he had resolved to combat all of his country's crises in order to relaunch its development. Here he is, constantly devising new strategies to improve his country. African countries must collaborate to achieve their development goals. To build trust and reduce disruption, it is critical to specify the objectives, timeline, and specifics of compensation for affected minors. Long-term solutions that go beyond simple regulation must address issues such as poverty, a lack of alternatives, and poor governance. The situation in Burkina Faso is a sobering reminder of the complex issues surrounding small-scale gold mining in Africa. Although there are no simple solutions, navigating this difficult terrain necessitates a nuanced strategy that prioritizes transparency, sustainability, and the well-being of impacted communities. The only way Burkina Faso and other African countries facing similar challenges can find a path to a more sustainable and equitable gold industry is to carefully weigh the various perspectives and their implications. Do you believe Ibrahim Tror made the correct decision by suspending export permits for small-scale gold production in Burkina Faso? Tell us what you think in the comments below. Turn on notifications so you'll be notified whenever we upload videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.